Hi, Fred. Hi. How's it Some, going? Something's going on here. I lost you. There you are. That, okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good. How's it going? Good, thank you. Glad to hear it. I sent you some questions and pictures. You didn't. You sent me some questions and pictures? Yep. Both text and emails. Oh man. Well, I will admit to you that my email address is not very pleased with me. But I will um Well, okay. The, okay. The question was regarding the notes of last week's meeting, and I'm trying to go from memory. Uh, you said there still has to be things done at the whatever center. I don't know what. The, uh huh. Know. Yeah. What are those things that have to still be done? Um, I just put down things for the raised bed. So right now it's going to be that um, we'll be finishing up with the putting down cardboard. I have to go get more cardboard on Thursday morning. They're not open this week. Well, they're not open today and tomorrow. It looks um, like the beds are all done. It looks like the beds are all done. Are there other beds around there? We talking a thing? No. It looks like the beds are all done. What other beds have to require cardboard? I didn't see any. Okay. I've gotten the whole place completely cleared out. There are no beds in there, except for the new ones that I'm putting in now. Okay. There's nothing in there. Everything is completely out of that place. How many beds are there total? I'm building three raised beds right now. Oh, oh, okay. Where? In the, on the eastern side. So, you know, oh. the small gate. I haven't gone through there. All right. So the smallest gate that is to the north of the garden, all the way to the work shed. Okay. So these are uh, uh, flower beds or vegetable beds? It doesn't matter what anybody grows in them. Oh, so that's for other, people, other people to grow. Okay. Right. It's okay. for anything that, so if you got a space in there, it's whatever you want to put into your bed. Um, second item on that list was the, is there an IG building? Yes. What the is that? Generational Center down on yeah. Oslo? No. No, I was talking about that before. Let me go to my emails. Let me see if I can find yours. Here it is. GYAC renovation is in progress. Right, that's the Gifford Garden. That's the one where Okay, what's going on there? I removed everything out of the garden and I'm doing it completely over. Well, I know, but that was quite a few months ago. Yes, uh, but then we didn't have a chance to keep on going because we weren't technically allowed in the garden with anybody. So now so that what, I have the chance. So what's going to be done out there by mid-March? Um, I'm I'm re redoing the whole entire garden by mid March. Okay, there are many small tasks that need to be done. Right. So right now it's hold on a second. Let me find. I'll share a picture with you. Yeah, I lost it. There it is. Okay, this is what, well, it doesn't really look like that right now either. I've got the whole thing almost completely covered with cardboard. 
So this is what it currently looks like, or at least this is what's happening right now. Are you seeing that? How old is that picture? Um, two days. So that just happened? Yes. Okay. So um, I don't know if I have, oh geez, hold on. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's that one. Is this a newer one? No, that's still that old one. I think I took a newer one. Yes, this is the one that I need to share. Hold on. And you're going to bring in dirt or whatever? Yes. Um, hold on a second and I'll show you. Um, this and this. I didn't take any newer pictures this morning when I was out there. But um, is that that's a raised bed? So you're going to put those in all over? I'm just putting three of those keyhole raised beds in, okay. and then and that's between the shed and the gate to the north. Mm -hmm. So then let me close that and share this one. So see, I've got one, two, and then there's the third one out by the gate. Uh huh. So there are going to be three very large beds here. Uh -huh. And then from the gate to the pergola, I'm going to put in um, small little areas where we can plant things. So like herbs, um, yeah. pollinator plants, different what, things what, like that. that what are you going to lay down on the cardboard? Uh, I'm putting oh. mulch on the cardboard. On top of the cardboard. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I've got the cardboard in most places at least two layers thick. In some places it's three layers. And I don't mind because I'm trying my best to starve those things of water and light so that we get a head start on it. Um, and then, so this this is where I started to put down cardboard. We're getting compost, five yards of compost and five yards of topsoil delivered within the next week. Okay. And I didn't take a picture of the mulch piles, but I've, I've gotten the tree trimming guys to deliver three loads of chips so far. And I've, um, requested that the county go ahead and give me about 10 yards of uniform mulch to go on top of the there was a uh, There was a huge mulch pile out there. What happened to it? Um, I got it removed because it sat there for too long and it was full of weeds. Okay. Yeah, that, that wasn't going to be useful for our project. So getting back to the original question in your notes of last week's meeting, what what are these small chores that have to be done? Um, laying more cardboard and putting down mulch right now and helping me fix the raised beds. We're just getting it ready for planting. Okay. Yeah. I'm also taking, I'm, I'm also creating a six foot buffer outside of the fence so that we're not fighting with the fence holding the weeds. So outside the fence line, six feet all the way around, I'm taking that space. And and what, are you gonna put, what are you going to put there? I'm going to put different types of plants out there as well. So I'll use that as, as many demonstration spaces as well. Okay. So like I might put a small privet in one place. I'll put a small stopper in another place. Yeah. Um, we already have firebush out there, but you know, I just really, and, and um, the compost area is gonna be to the north of the mango tree, so that it's not in full sun all of the time, but it'll be, it'll have a chance to be hot enough anyway. So th where the mango tree is, I'll have the composting area over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but yeah, that's, those are the three large beds that I've got. Um, they're 12 at the back and four feet wide. Um, 
and let me see. Oh, and the space that is between the work shed and the pergola, I have all of those pavers out there and they're gonna lay the pavers for us so that we can have a solid seating space. I'm not going to grow anything in that area. I'm just going to use it. I'm going to get some, some more picnic tables to put down so that we can have a, an outdoor class area. Because there are some very lovely days, even if we're not dealing with the children, where we don't have to have people cooped up inside of the building proper. We can have outdoor seating. So yeah, that's what that looked like a couple days ago. But And that was before the 4-H people showed up. That was Saturday morning. Saturday morning? No, Sunday morning. That was Sunday morning. And then um, Saturday afternoon, we got all, we finished off all the cardboard that I had and I went and I got more. And then Lena, Susan, and Vincent came out and they basically finished the rest of the quadrant where the mango tree is. From the, from the mango tree to the pergola. They finished laying cardboard over there. I got a few more big pieces and I put over the smaller pieces. So that's what we're doing. We're just spreading mulch and laying cardboard and just getting the garden ready for planting. I have a, I went and I bought a pond liner from Facebook Market. So um, very soon that'll be picked up. And, um, and then we'll be able to put a new pond in. And that's going to be great. I'll get minnows from Mosquito Control. And pond, I'm going... Pond going the same place it did before? Um, almost, yeah. I'm going to try to put it a little, a little bit towards the center, yes. Okay. Right now it's covered up with cardboard because I just don't want the weeds there, but I'm figuring that we can just make the cutout and, and, and have and put it in there properly. But I went and I got a pond liner, just a preformed one. I did, I'm not using the, the thick rubber to create it this time. Okay. Now, going back into there, again, one other comment you had in last week. Uh, you still have openings at the uh, at the office. Yeah. Yes. So Have you opened with the afternoons yet? I'm thinking that I'll switch Thursday mornings and put it as Thursday afternoon. Okay. Let me know. But I'm I'm going to do that. I'll I'll be asking um Karen and Jim to fix it into the calendar so that then it'll be open for you. And if Bill wants to do it, then you and Bill can do it. He's a still a little but he's, he's getting his shots. He's getting his shots, yes. Yeah. And I'm very glad to see that most of you are on the list to either get it soon or you all uh -huh. have already gotten it. My wife has tried three different times. Have you all called to be put on the waiting list? Every list you can think of. Uh. Different list, but... Uh, at the Gifford Health Center we were on. But uh, rumor has it that the vaccine was taken away from them. Okay, no idea. Yeah. Is that the whole, is that the whole, gift, the whole health care in Gifford? Because it's still working. I volunteered at the one here this last weekend. And I know for a fact that whole health is still working. Are they giving out vaccinations? Oh yeah, I, I worked it. I worked it all weekend in the rain. Well, we I had we had a lady that called us and said to give them a call, get your name on it. Yeah. She called back a day or two later and said it was taken away. Uh, and what, what organization was that? Uh, she works out there at the health center. She's on the board. Whole whole health? Yeah, Gifford. Whole family health? She's on the board. 
Hmm. Do it in the Vero Beach whole family health. It's you just can sign up for both places. Yeah. Well, I don't know the story. All I know is that. <laughs> you were called and said and told that your yeah. waiting list section um, reservation is no use. Okay. Correct. Um, yeah. I will ask more questions and I will see how many answers I can get for you all and I will share them. I think uh, we're on the, hold on one second. Lori, what other list are you on? Did you all call the Emergency Operations Center? Indian River Family Health or something. And Whole Family Health. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a good, that's a, yeah. Treasure Coast. Treasure Coast Family Health. You name it, we're on the list. Okay, well, <laughs> we, I, I really only know about the um, emergency operations center where they, yeah. they've been doing the lineups over at the fairgrounds. Right. So, mm -hmm. and they're doing those by phone calls now because, well, it was almost useless for people to try to get on there with, through, through internet. It was, it was causing a lot of havoc. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's, that's what we're doing out at Gifford. Um, it has been a whole lot of fun so far. Um, I got really good in soaps on Sunday. <laughs> and um, I'm hoping that it will be finished by the second week of March. Well, at least getting it completely redone by the second week of March, I shouldn't say um, completely finished. And of course, I keep on telling you all that my, my overall game plan is definitely to never put that thing back to sleep. <laughs> um, because it creates issues, right? It cre um, when the weeds are allowed to do what they will, then that creates a situation where um, they, even when we pull them up, they've left behind a seed bank. And I'm not inclined to ever have another seed bank situation there. So um, the, the garden will be in cultivation year round. Of course, I completely understand why the thing was put to bed, right? Um, it was not a sustainable garden to begin with. They didn't have access to, to water um, in the quantity or um, as steadily as, as was needed for, for management on better days. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot better now because we do have city water running there. And um, so there shouldn't be that many hindrances to getting it sorted now, like there was before. Um, let's see if I can find the little, um, Yes, this is the layout that I think I showed you all in one of my previous meetings, but I'll show it to you all again now so that you all have a better idea as to what the game plan is. Okay. So this is um, my little diagram of what the aerial view would look like. Oh, come on now. And it's not responding. Of course it's not. You are welcome to my world of, of problems that I've been having with this computer in general. All right, so I'm putting in three large raised beds to the east side. So between the north gate and the work shed are three very large raised beds. 
I'm going to try to center the pond as best as I can. Um, keeping in mind having wide enough walk er walking areas so that even if we wanted to put temporary pots and things in there, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't make a difference to the space. Um, I'm going to put pavers down between the pergola and the work shed. And then even though I do have it as raised bed between the gate and the pergola, it's probably not necessarily going to be raised beds per se, but I'll probably just um, go ahead and um, just create little gardens, small demonstration spaces. And I would like to use plants that we are going to give away in mm. that area. All right, there we go. Now you can see it better, the overall plan. All right. Um, and I've got this green ring outside where a lot of our weed encroachment has been coming from the fact that it is not easy to weed whack near chain link fence. And it you can't mow underneath the chain link fence. So I'm going to come six feet out from the chain link kill all of that off, put mulch down and use some of the extra pavers to create small demonstration spaces around the fence line. And that's going to make it easier for us to manage what's within the fence line without having this fence line that is full of weed, um, full of, well, not full of weeds, but full of plants that we just don't want, right? Which is the definition of weed encroaching back into the garden. And of course, it's gonna make it easier for the guys who are maintaining the, the grass area as well to just mow and weed whack around that spot. The weed whackers won't have any problems because they won't be encountering the chain link fence anymore. So are you seeing this, Fred? No, I see. All right, so that's basically what I'm working on. Um, I know that one of the complaints about the beds that were in before was that they were way too narrow to really do as many things as one would want to do. So I've gotten them all set up to be at least four feet wide so that you can do, even if you're doing square foot gardening or whatever sort of plants that you're putting in there, the space is going to be wide enough to be able to do them. You can put corn in there. You can put whatever you feel like putting in there. It's your space. Go ahead and do as you will with it. So that is um, what I've gone ahead and put in into those towards the east. I have one bed that I'm allocating for when we get the GYAC children back out. I'm allocating one bed for 4-H and then one bed for anybody else who wants to do anything they feel like doing. So um, that's there and it's available. In the spaces, that little V between the beds, I'm putting in large pots. So we're gonna be able to use those large containers as additional spaces for demonstrating whether we put tomatoes and bell peppers in them or we put flowers in them, it will matter not. There'll just be additional things to be able to use for containers. Will it be irrigation? Um, irrigation, we have water over here. I mean here. irrigation. Right, so we'll, we'll be able to I'm going to get Mark to put in some drip lines. Okay. And then we'll put micro emitters into the pots. So that whatever it is that you want to grow, then you can you can adjust the controllers for for those things. The only thing that we're going to have to make sure that we do is make sure that we when we set them, we're setting them for everything that's on that zone. 
which shouldn't be too hard to do. And of course, I would like to have the controllers manually um, managed instead of automatic. But this is what it's looking like for right now. I'm just gonna put um, minnows in the pond so that we can manage our mosquitoes and everything. And I'm thinking that we can put little beds back around the pond again so we can put our pineapple area back in, we can put aloe back in, we can put herbs into one, you know, like how there was a kind of a sunbeam type of thing going on. There is space for that. I don't want it to be as crowded as it had been. So they're not going to be as big as they were. So that there will be enough space to get in the middle and do whatever maintenance that is required of that for that space. That's what I'm thinking. But for right now, it's gonna be just a mulched area with the pond on the inside until we get around to adding more or deciding that we want to subtract. So on the side of the shed to the east will be a potting area. The footings are going in for it today. And I just went and bought a sink and we'll put the sink over by between the pergola and where the paved area and the pergola happen to be because that's where the water is. So we'll put the sink right in there. So we have a replacement sink already. But yeah, this is what I'm working on for GYAC. And hopefully this will be pretty and sustainable. <laughs> The original design for the garden was magnificent. It was very, very beautiful. The only real problem that existed for that was the fact that it was, it was, we were not able to take care of it. sustained, we, we weren't able to take care of it because we didn't have enough water all of the time. Um, are, can you all see this picture that I just put up? No. Okay. Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Okay, great. So the space here between the shed and the pergola, that's mm -hmm. where I'm going to pave. Mm -hmm. So that'll be new seating. And eventually I'll get one of those little things that the, the type of um, covers that you can take down and put back up. I'll put one of those up so that even if we're doing something on a windy day in the summertime, you don't have the sun just beating down upon your head. So that's where I'm putting the the seating area. And hopefully this will be as pretty as I imagine it will be. But yeah, we'll just use the, the, the space outside of the fence line for um, as additional spaces for demonstration. And if anybody has any native purple passion flower vine and they'd like to propagate a piece for me, I would appreciate it. That way I don't have to go spend $20 on one. Not keen on spending $20 on one. Don't laugh at me, Fred. You know I'm a miser, even if it's not my money. I just spent $20 on one. Oh, bless your heart. Why didn't you just send out an email to your fellow gardeners? I don't know. Because I... <laughs> you have a network. We, we always exchange plants. We share. It's my second attempt. The first one didn't. 
nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. I had a red one and a purple one. So I have a lot of quirky stems. So I'm gonna just collect a few of the quirky stems that I already have. And I have a couple of coral honeysuckle vines as well. But I want a purple, a native purple to put back onto the pergola so that it can cover it back up again. There was so one there once. There were two of them there, yes. Mm -hmm. But that got taken over by some of everything in its grandfather and there's a thriving stump of um, carrot wood in there. So I'll be getting that sorted out in the next couple days as well. I'm not going to be here after Friday afternoon until Wednesday night. I will be off, I will be out of state actually. So I'm trying to get all of my ducks in a row for what needs to be done over the weekend at the garden and through the rest of the days. So yes, the I should have the 4-H people back out there. They'll be confirming with me whether or not they'll be out there Saturday or Sunday. A lot of times their Saturdays are booked up because it's coming down to the things that they need to do for fair. So, you know, they have animal weigh-ins and inspections and things like that on Saturdays. So they've been come. They they came out on Sunday, and they'll basically have a wheelbarrow brigade helping me. Just dump mulch. We're putting a pretty thick layer on there because it's not dried out yet. It's fresh chipped trees, and then um, after that, I'll get some mulch that's like what the rest of the landscape has down on top of it, and we'll lay that on top of our not so uniform <laughs> um, chips that we have. And that's gonna be good so that we can, it can look very, very nice. And of course, we'll have our signage up there that explains that we used a lot of chip trees, several yards, several truckloads of chip trees will be spread out out there. Um, I'm hoping for planting weekend to be, or planting week to be the first week in March. So those of you who are inclined to be outside and want to be socially distanced, that would be a great um, time for, for you to have some, some days available to, to help me populate some of the spaces that we're creating. Um, Fred, what pavers are not being used for the seating area between the work shed and the pergola. So the original raised beds were made with pavers that were painted or something, right? But they yeah. were put like four inches into the ground and eight inches left. They were, the yeah, they were on edge. Right. So what I'd like to do is delineate spaces at the on the the new area that I'm making at the fence line, that six foot space out there, that's where I'd like to create new beds to mark off like between one fence post and the other, I'd like to use those pavers on edge out there to create new bed spaces. So like um, one area we can use some maybe alternate the pink and the green because we have a lot of the green because the green was in the middle and it was just uniform green in the middle. So maybe alternate the pink and the green, alternate the blue and the green, you know, to make it look like we had some idea as to, you know, because it's all hodgepodge right, right now. Um, so to put, to create a difference between what we're displaying in this area, because we might just put sunflowers in one space between one fence post to the other, but then the next space between one fence post and the other, we have a privet. And then the next fence post to the other, we might put nothing but zinnias. I don't really know, right? I'm just saying that that's what I'd like to use the excess of pavers for, to definitely mark off a new garden bedding space. 
Are you using the papers that you've got? You had a whole stack of papers there. Yes, I'm using the existing materials. Okay. And you yeah. got somebody that's going to lay them. Yes, the county is going to lay them. Okay. And prepare it and. Yes. Put, compact it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, right. whatever it takes in order to to get um, to get those papers laid, they are mm -hmm. going to do the work for that. I'm supplying the materials. So it'll just be a matter of establishing our, of us doing the things that are the other gardening tasks. The bigger tasks, like they came in and they dumped the soil and leveled the area. Those are the things that, that the county was in charge of. And um, you're just about the only one that I know who knows how to do the pavers. And I was not going to have it be something that I would say to you, well, you no, I'm not going to do that. And I can't have you all working with small, with young children yet, or anybody in the public. There isn't enough um, space out there for you to socially distance and teach anyone how to do it. It's really. I know it's not rocket science, Fred. I know. But 99% of pavers is preparing the area that anybody can flop them down. Yeah, so the county is in charge of it. They'll That's be getting that, that work done. And I'm happy about that. <laughs> um, what happened I, to all, this, all the, um, I'll call it peat, uh, that was there? It the, got scraped off. Six inches of peat. Where did it go? Um, mostly to the landfill because of all of the debris that was in it. Yeah. So they had to lift up all of the landscaping film. And it was basically one big thick mat hmm. with landscaping film holding it together and the weeds. Was there film underneath it? Yes, there was landscaping film underneath that. Yes. Hmm. And that's what really held the seed bank together. So that was that was the reason why I just excavated the whole entire thing. I was not going to fight with that anymore. It didn't make sense. That was a bigger population than I could fend off in two years of constantly being out there and, and working at it. So I wasn't going to do that. I'm trying to work with a cleaner slate. So that's part of the reason why I've been laying the cardboard even when it's just raining because I don't want us to have what's already growing out there, <laughs> get that much of a head start on us. Well, I remember the last time, or many, many last times that the cardboard was laid down and along comes a windy day and- And it lifts it up. It's, it was all blown up against the fence. Yeah. Well, I've got pavers on top of it now, holding it down until we get our mulch to put down on top of it. I saw that. Yeah. So that's the game plan. Um, we've got a few layers of cardboard down to starve it of water and light. And hopefully while we're out there doing our other things, the, the weed population will be able to be controlled a little bit better because it should not, over, it should not be as overwhelming as it had been. That's, that's, that's my hope <laughs> with proper, um, with a with a really good start, that's my hope. So, yeah, folks. Um, I think that's just about all I'd have to tell you all today, honestly, because I I just need um, I sent you another question. What was the question? February twelfth. How do you kill a four foot Chinese fan palm short of a chainsaw? Short of a chainsaw. What methods have been used before so that I'll know what not to tell you? Well, I've heard that it could be uh, kerosene, coal oil, gasoline, muriatic acid, <laughs> Roundup concentrates, salt water, 
Any of the above? <laughs> and you're saying a ch uh, what kind of fan palm? Chinese fan. Chinese fan palm. Yeah, the one that has the nasty thorns on the side of the, the stems. Oh dear, yes. And you don't want to get in there too close to that anyway. No, I kill it. Hmm. How do you kill a Chinese fan palm without it's using really, a chainsaw? If you, if you kill the, what is it, the first shoot? The crown, right. That's it. Yeah. So you... I, I would, I would um, use loppers and cut away all of the fronds from around the crown of it. Yeah. And then I would, um, I would go in and I would put an excess of, um, I would try the salt and vinegar method. Even if you don't want to use muriatic acid, I would, I would, I would totally make it eat its heart out and put acid down in it. No, it, it, it'll be its own container, right? Because you've you've removed all of the fronds, yeah, and you can snip off as much of the heart of it as you can see. I tried to drill out the heart; that didn't do any good. It still sent up a shoot, uh, you know, a mangy looking shoot. It was halfway missing its right. Head. It came well, up. I would lop off all of its protection first and be very careful with it, right? Because it'll bite, right? That's why we're fighting with it, and cut away as much in the center as you possibly can, and then I would use the acid. I wouldn't just go and throw acid on top of it with a lot of protection, though. Gotcha. Okay, thank I you. I would remove its protection from it, and then I would hurt its soul. Okay. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all for being tree, tree hugger in, in chief. However, there are just some plants that are better off not where people are. And when they drop their seeds and they sprout, Roundup doesn't even phase them. No, no, no. Roundup is not for that. Because remember, palms are monocots, yeah. they're not dicots. So they're in the grass. Well, they're, they're like a tree grass. That's the best description I can give. So... Roundup was developed to not kill the grass species that they were trying to cultivate. They're they're more they're more for broadleaf plants, and palms are not broadleaves. Yeah. So Roundup won't won't affect them. Nothing will. No. So um, yeah, try like try creating a bowl in the heart and um, using the acid. Yeah. Okay. But I would definitely stay on top of it. And anytime you see anything new, ab anything new coming out, abuse it. Definitely, it, 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 it needs to be abused. It's, it's not the most friendly um, tree in the world, at least not in my opinion. It's or, ugly. Yeah, well, yeah, that too. <laughs> And I don't like the fact that it's, it really is a really great hiding place for critters that you want to manage, but the, the palm trees defenses are also defending the critters. Yeah. Yeah. But it's dirty. It drops its fruit. My dogs try to eat it. Oh. And it's just a dirty tree. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that would be what I would recommend. Go ahead and, and throw some acid on it. On to better things. All right. Do any of you all have any questions about what it is that we're doing or have any ideas that you'd like to put forth? Okay. The crickets. Well, thank you all for coming to the meeting. You all have yourselves a lovely afternoon. Send me emails, even though I've got... I'm going to be shutting down my computer for about two hours and hopefully that will go ahead and let the reset on it work. I'm not fond of the little swirling thing.
coming up on my screen every time I try to, to do something. So um, we'll see if Brian's latest instructions to me will actually bear fruit. You all have yourselves a lovely rest of the day. I'm gonna go make some lunch and eat while my computer gets his life together. Be safe. Fred, I recommend that you all call the Emergency Operations Center and get on their waiting list. It's called Emergency, emergency Operate Operating Center. Operation Center. Um, I did this in, I think it was two or three weeks ago in, the, in a meeting from two or three weeks ago. Um, where, where are they located? 43rd Avenue, but they do the shots out at the fairground. Okay. All right. So get on their waiting list. It's, it's use their phone number. You don't even have to go on the website anymore to sign up. Just use their phone number. It's in today's paper, front page. Oh, great. See, wonderful. Front page on today's paper. So yeah, call the Emergency Operations Center and see about getting onto their waiting list. Okay. Thanks. All right. You're welcome, dear. Stay safe and you all take care of yourselves. And as usual, check in with somebody who you haven't seen in a while.